talking and hit record. That's what I'm going to do here. So you know what? <clears throat> I'm going to take a drink of water first. Suspense. Oh, I can tell I'm so excited. Because this took a long time to get to because we've been talking about doing this show for a minute. But we are here. It is time. This is Omo. This is Odd Man Out. I'm Colby. I'm Dan. Holy shit, it's been a minute since we have recorded anything together, and this is a whole new beast. This is something new. It's definitely the first of, I think, anything you and I have attempted since, shit, I don't know, me and you years ago at this point. I, dude, oh. it is. I think, technically, the last thing we did together was, it feels like lifetimes ago, that was before I would, I became... Who I am today. That's before I was a wrestler. That's before I, I went through anything. That's before well, we the, all this shit. Becky Clinton, was the Becky Clinton episode before the wrestling? I forget. Yes. That's the last really major thing that I will acknowledge that we did and Rick kind of into conversation. Because that's a, <laughs> there was some episodes after that, but no one actually listens. And hopefully people listen to this. That's true. Uh, that's true. Uh, yes. Uh, so the episode we did with Clunan and Conrad was like the week I had the same meeting for the school I was going to because uh, I already had this equipment set up in the same way. I just left it overnight. And uh, yeah, in a weird way, I do feel like that's almost like the super secret, secret launch party for Odd Man Out because that was the episode that goes, oh, this this was better than everything else we did. <laughs> it's the only episode that I can say I'm proud of. I mean... Shout out Michael Conrad and Becky Clinton for joining us on a episode of our former show that I think no one would listen to except for our buddy Piano Snakes, and that was it. Um, uh, well, we had a couple more. Yeah, we, we have a we have a clown therapy. Shout out while we're doing shout outs to people I know listen. <laughs> the two people I know listen. And Derek, I think that was it. There was like three people listened to it. We can't. Yeah, it was him, a man. pod we did sometimes. We can't oh, we can't count, count Kenobi in? Okay. Uh, I, right. I, I, I wasn't sure. I won't say he didn't listen, but I, I understand if he didn't listen. But I hopefully all three of you That's are fair. listening to this right now. We should get to what this is, though. Yes. How, how you want to you wanna go about this? You want to I just explain I just, it first? Or you want to tap yeah. in, tap out? I'm not sure. We've been ominous about it. We've been obscure about it. We've been a bit... Uh, hidden in the dark about it from all the weird teases on Instagram from what the lack of both hyping it up to friends and people that we talk to, but also being very much like, Hey, this is what it is. So I think we'll just go with that to the general masses that are hopefully listening out there. Hopefully you're not just the same people that already know if you are, thank you for coming here, but uh, tell some more people about it for fuck's sake. We already told you your friends. Yeah. Tell your neighbors, tell that one annoying Mormon that comes to your house every five weeks to see if you want to go to church with him. So bring him in, bring his ass inside, chain him up, make him listen to an episode, show him what what they're missing on the side, <laughs> whatever side you're on, I guess. Uh, but that's true. That's the, the side the side we are on at Odd Man Out as a few things because the birthplace for everything that was this is. The weird subcultures and countercultures we just exist in day to day life, I guess. But also noticing that they all cross the fuck over and no one talks about that. There's there's a trinity uh, to take from here that I've believed in for a couple years now, and buddies of mine have gone understood it. Colby and I kind of met because of it, but at I met out the concept is that. We believe that there's like this trinity of three subcultures that come together quite often that no one ever notices. Uh, punk rock, metal, or you want to call it, whatever alternative genre you fall under. Uh, comic books, and kind of flip-flops. Some people would say horror movies, some people would say rep for wrestling. But there's this like unifying thing about all three, and you meet a lot of interesting people based off those three to four interests. It is, um, it is something yeah, like, it's... well, it's something that you, we kind of, I can't remember what brought it up originally because we were pitching ideas and talking about shit and it kept coming back to the different subcultures, not only crossing over, but the amount of different creators who have been inspired by and worked through. 
Uh, honestly, people like uh, Vilvos have been a huge inspiration for this, just from like loving sure. the comic work, and then the motherfucker following me for wrestling, and then me being like, oh, he wrestled, and then you being like, or not he wrestled, he loves wrestling, and then you being like, yeah, he loves wrestling, he talks about it all the time, and then me following back on Twitter and going, oh yeah, this motherfucker's awesome, talks about wrestling, talks about comics, has great taste in music, uh, and I'm like, oh, we started noticing more and more of the trend of like, oh, this person that we love their music, oh, they also love wrestling, oh, they also love this comic, and you mentioned horror movies, that is a great thing of like, fucking horror movies are also almost always there, and it's this interesting dynamic that is a constant through, like the history of all of them, it's always been this weird connection that they run in and out of each other constantly. Exactly, and it's very much like outsider art, I mean, one of the best comics in the past couple of years has been Do a Powerbomb by Danny Warren Johnson, and the dude's yeah. background is really just a love for, you know, heavy metal and comic books and wrestling, and you can trace it with that, you can trace it with Gerard Way, less the wrestling side, but the punk rock and the movies and music. Well, and... you're forgetting wrestling a little bit too. Mike oh, I'm Way, kidding. a huge oh, yeah. wrestling I fan. I forgot Mike Way for the wrestling. I forget about that fun fact sometimes, honestly, despite listening to countless interviews about the Way Brothers over the years. And um, Umbrella Academy begins with an elbow drop. Right. See, I forget because Umbrella Academy is not my favorite work by them. I but say... We'll start there with the wild takes. <laughs> That's true. The one. <laughs> so, the, that that might be the weirdest wild take too when it comes to us if for anyone who's new which is hopefully a lot of people again we're hoping but for new people out there please, to this. please we we like you we pro well probably i don't know but if you'll know anything about us uh gerard way and grant morrison are going to come up a lot that will just happen uh i would suggest playing a drinking game but you would probably just be drunk to RA by this point because yeah what? it's gonna happen a lot a lot and they don't even have active books right now and that if they do have an active book soon it's over for you guys well I guess Morrison does have one on Substack right now but I don't, I don't know who lists the Substack and if you do please let us know because I'd be curious to see who actually enjoys Substack because I don't hear many people talk about it except for like me and Colby yeah so. and I it's so it's made a weird pipeline in that side of the comics world where I feel like you hear about a book gets announced on Substack, gets released on Substack, and then it either goes to Comicsology or to uh, stores. Uh, also, Substack hard to say that many times close together. That's very true. It's a complicated word. It's you know not as bad as other combinations of words that have to do with my job, but um, <sighs> I think. Which we'll not explain what my job is yet, because we'll, I don't want to get, you know, the corporations upset with us, so yeah. uh, let's not do that just yet. Not not yet. Hopefully, Maybe I do. Well, hopefully, hopefully oh. in the near future, there will be other jobs that will be fun to talk about. Exactly, and we'll have those people on those jobs on here as well. Yes. Because um, part of the show is not just to talk about, you know, nerd stuff per se, and like, oh, great, did you see the Marvels that came out, or... You know stuff like that, but Dude, also talk if, about you know the community and the culture around it. So. If you fucking see us uh, having a stereotypical nerd movie review moment, please just fucking shoot us. To be honest, I uh, I I mean I dread getting back to that. Unless we're talking about like Tank Girl, so now hold on. Unless it's like the Tank Girl reboot. Instant contradiction. You are correct. Uh, we will nerd over the dumbest shit, but that is the acceptable level. I'll be honest here. If it's Tank Girl. I'll be honest. well. I will add for you and you alone. I will add an asterisk for all future shit talking. I will grant you Timothy Chalamet for future reference. Yeah, it, they are in because, quite frankly, the Twonka movie. I'm very excited about. Um, <laughs> I've had explained to people the Twonka movie and what that actually is. Um, I don't know, but calling it that makes me think it's something very different. That I that I won't lie might be more intriguing to a lot of people. R slash Twonkas, I should probably start, honestly. That'll become Dude, my new Twitter. Reddit can that be... Okay, if this Twitter. if this takes off at all, can that please be our subreddit? R slash Twonkas? I mean, I'm okay with it. If we, actually, if we start a community and R slash Twonkas takes off, I'm down. Um, oh! For to, <laughs> to rein in, you just said the fucking key word that's all over both of our notes. The other thing that we wanted to focus on with this is fucking community. Yeah, that, that's part of why we started the show is trying to act that there's a lot of us across the states and, and probably countries um, that all like various things. 
and uh, I'll be cool to, you know, start a podcast related to those things, like, you know, different types of counterculture, because it seems like no one's really doing a podcast for this generation of counterculture. You got cartoons kayfabe for, like, you know, your old heads, but there's nothing for, like, your modern uh, and a weird shit, really, except for, like, these tiny corners of the internet that are maybe an alleyway. Yeah, I mean, dude, we're living in a time we just had Faceless in the Family come out. We just had Batman, Gargoyle of Gotham come out. Great. Like, we've had insane, s- insane levels of uh, crazy shit here. Like, we're not talking about, we've both been kind of nerding out over Nights here lately, which is another really fun, unique book to pop out of nowhere, it feels like. Nights is the comic that I didn't know I wanted, and I thought I had it already with uh, Matthew Rosenberg's What's the First Place from Here? But Nights is everything that everyone loves is about 2003 aesthetic like gorillas and shit like that yeah but in yes. a comic book and dude no I that's it's perfect awesome and it, it just feels like something that not enough people are realizing is good and i don't know there's a lot of good comics out so it gets overlooked by a lot of shit right now between you know big companies and smaller but there's an audience there and it's just trying to put it in the right hands but that's also just colby and i seem to like selling people comics when we can which yeah. is why we also made the show uh, yeah. about cool books yeah oh. we both uh again let us wave through the ocean of weird shit and rumor mill of shit and let us deliver you the stuff that's worth delivering because we trust us i don't know why we enjoy it because i talk to so many people that they talk about going through preview uh, going through previews or talk about going through upcoming releases and they talk about it like it's fucking homework and i know we've always been the reverse of Fucking when something gets announced, overhype or not overhyping, getting very excited and getting every bit of information we can about it instantly. I think that's because that's how you and I met. It was basically in the pages of the comment sections of your review of Gerard Way's Doom Patrol run, yeah. which was now what seven years ago? I yeah, guess at this point, no? seven. Yeah, seven years ago. And you and I met in the comments of that and bonded over weird shit because of like that, like Giant the Homicide Maniac and MCR and. Uh, a little depressed boy, maybe I think as yeah. well, like some other shit like that. Dude, and you and I just kind of clicked, and uh, it's uncomfortable, cool dude. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, so like stuff like that, and just kind of like became this ongoing back and forth of like, oh, you like this, you like that too, which we don't see much, but as we both gotten older, we seem to find people occasionally who get it, and that's always special. It really and, is. Uh, that's why, once again, why this show is made is to hopefully help you, the viewer, the listener, wherever you are um to enjoy what we have presented to you and this is just the ash can really like yeah. it's not it's me better than this hopefully you look back and like this is actually garbage but like there's a couple of sparks of intelligence and cool ideas here this, uh, yeah hopefully this is like uh to go nerdy again with the mcr reference this is our attic demos this is our fucking uh misfit static age before it was actually released where it's just like hey we're fucking in the you know we're not fucking in the attic but we're in the attic fucking around with microphones Exactly. Um, make, making weird little audio clip notes and seeing where it goes. And see what's hopefully going on. years from now, everyone's on r slash Twonkas and they're like, like talking damn. about that first episode being garbage. It was fucking awful. Uh-huh. All they, they just they talked about this, they talked about that. They, I will grant you guys, if you don't know this, we are fighting the urge to get more rambly like a motherfucker. It is in the it's, blood. It's bad. That's what the old show it was so wild because there was just too much rambling but trying to keep it you know short sweet to the point um but yeah, yeah this is omo this is omo this is what we've been talking about for a while right now right now the house doesn't have any paintings on it there's not a lot of shit on the walls but there's a foundation that we're proud of and if you motherfuckers show up it's gonna be dope if not it's gonna be the crack house down the street you don't want that we don't want that I mean, it could just turn into one of those, like, ask a punk type venues that you and I both have gone to many times mm-hmm. over the years. Okay I that. mean, the classic ask a punk, where, like, it's a random building across the street from a corner store where there's one guy uh, playing, you know, lottery games in the corner that seems kind of weird. But you go back to the corner store every, like, five minutes, grab another beer because you didn't buy enough. You never do. Maybe that's just me in my life sometimes. I don't know. There was a skate shop, the skate show thing recently, and that was crazy. So... <laughs> Um, a buddy of mine and friend of the show was uh, playing that night, so I went to go see his band, and man, the corner store was apparently a weird experience I found out later, so. Oh, yeah? 
Yeah, apparently it was the corner store you're not supposed to go to solo and bring your buddies with you because apparently the bike gets shot and no one told me. So I went to go grab some beer and then came back and later I found out that you weren't supposed to do that unless you brought people oh my with God. you. But hey. It was a good show. Blood Ritual played a good set. Uh, Ben kicked ass. Damn, great name. Everyone got paid, I think. What, dude, um, praise the some, fucking God. Listen to Blood Ritual. So, yeah, yeah, listen to Blood, listen Blood Ritual. Ritual. You should. They're great. Love those guys. They, so, they're all yeah. sweet. They had to turn down a tour with Iron Maiden, I heard, but I don't know if that's true. But that's what just. In... It was. I I thought it was like you know, another band. Well, Exodus, they were maybe I think it was Exodus. Well, they were. Well, if I remember right, they were worried that if they opened for Iron Maiden, the fans would be so excited for them that when they left the stage, no one would stay for Maiden, and they were worried that was going to be that's a also true problem. They so they had they I, I, they said they left. I think they got kicked. Well, I mean, Ben's a nice guy. What do you expect? Well, so he, he the two nights. That's why people love him. That's why everyone shows up. They said we showed up seven days early for Blood Ritual, killed seven kids to get here, and that's all we came here for. We're not here for Maiden. No one cares about Maiden. They don't even have an. Air, it's not exactly. even a real airplane on stage. It's a prop. He Ben does Blood Rituals <laughs> on stage. Guarantee. It's crazy. You have to I've go see it. him. It's you, wild. You have to go see him live. We'll, no we'll, we'll get we'll get we'll get Ben on the we'll get Ben on the show. We'll let Ben discuss his uh, rituals process and how it goes into all detail. Yeah. Um, but that'll be you for another episode. That's another after episode. This ash can. That's one of many oh, yeah. blood ritual magic. One of many topics brought to you here at Oma that the other people won't bring you. Exactly. That they're, that's what they're hiring. I mean, look, you can talk to look. You can watch cartoons, K food, and hear about blue ink. But here, you can hear about blood and rituals and everything in between. It'll be everything awesome. Everything in between. Oh. That's only one. Again, we have so much to talk about. We have so little time. This is the ash can. This is what people hopefully. Honestly, I have no clue where the term ash can comes from. We'll find along the way, or maybe Dan's about to say the answer immediately. I mean, I thought about looking it up, but like. I was like, it's not sure. You know, I didn't put that in the note. Yeah, it's not even episode one. We can't give you the answers to what Ashcan is. You got to watch this show. So that, so if the episode one, we'll find out. You know, yeah. So. Episode one, we'll find out, and then we'll start doing. <laughs> then, then you'll figure out what the real show is. This might not even be the show. This might just be the weirdest teaser for a show that doesn't actually exist. And then you're gonna fi- watch the actual show and be like, this is totally different. But you'll know. It's like David Lynch, but better than Twin Peaks. So holy shit, that's it. what people people are saying that about us already. That better than Twin Peaks is what I'm hearing on the interwebs immediately. That's insane. That's exactly. I uh, better than Twin Peaks. But uh, we I think to, that's I think that's all I got. I think you know what? Better than Twin Peaks is the if that's our beginning point. Holy shit! Think of the places we will go.